TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel is preparing for what senior Jerusalem officials stress to be an inevitable path of confrontation with the regionally stretched tentacles of the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. Despite the imminent return to the nuclear negotiations in Vienna, scheduled for November 29th, Iran emphasizes that the 2015 agreement will not be revived unless the United States removes its sanctions and guarantees that any future administration will abide by the terms of a renewed agreement. The United Arab Emirates and Syria are evidently on a course of rapprochement, a fact that troubles the United States. Israel is preparing for what senior Jerusalem officials stress to be an inevitable path of confrontation with the regionally stretched tentacles of the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. During an inauguration ceremony of a new defense factory of the Israeli Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, which was established a mere several hundred meters from the country's northeastern border with Lebanon, Defense Minister Benny Gantz highlighted that the chosen location for the new installation sends a clear message to Israel's northern enemies. Defense Minister Gantz further seized the opportunity, less than a day after Damascus blamed Israel for an aerial strike against Iranian targets in its country, to reiterate Jerusalem's proclaimed red lines vis-à-vis -vis its northern sector. <laughs> אנו פועלים כל הזמן ובאופן נרחב מול ניסיונות ההתעצמות וניסיונות להפר את האיזון במרחב. לא נאפשר הצטדות בעמלך שיפגע בעניינות הישראלית באזור על ידי חיזבאללה ושלוחי איראן בכל האזור. As a security related consequence to last week's approval of Israel's 2021-2022 state budget, Gantz underscored the defense establishment's proactive efforts to bolster domestic fortifications ahead of the expected lethal collision with Iran and its proxies, noting further the implementation of a northern fortification program that includes billions of dollars in investments to fortify civilian communities aimed to withstand tens of thousands of rockets that are expected to rain upon Israel indiscriminately during the next wide-scale military conflagration. <laughs> התחלנו בשבוע שעבר גם בפרויקט מיגון הצפון, שנשקיע בו מיליארדים בשנים הקרובות, ותרגלנו גם את העורף הלאומי בכל ההיבטים של הגנה אזרחית. אנו ממשיכים גם לשפר כל הזמן את מערכת ההגנה הרב-שכבתית, לרבות מערכת טל שמיים שתספק הגנה מול איומים הולכים ומתפתחים מעומק השטח. אנו פועלים כל העת למנוע מלחמה. עושים מבצעים, מעבירים מסרים, מונים התעצמות. אך אם וכשתהיה לחימה כאן בחזית, במרחק של מאות מטרים לא רבים, נהיה ערוכים בעורף ונהיה ערוכים גם לביצוע פעולות מבצעיות שלא ראינו בעבר, באמצעים שלא, שלא היו בידינו בעבר ושיפגעו בליבת הטרור ויכולותיו. Defense Minister Gantz continued his northern tour from the newly established Advanced Defense Systems Plan to the border with Lebanon, where he attended a comprehensive situation assessment together with IDF Deputy Chief of General Staff Major General Hiltzi Alevi and Northern Command Commander Major General Amir Baram. Separately, Gantz also met with a visiting delegation of U.S. Congress members from both sides of the aisle during which the American lawmakers highlighted once more the ironclad U.S. commitment in general, and that of Congress in particular, to guarantee Israel's qualitative military edge, to maintain the capabilities to protect itself against the accumulating threats emanating from Iran and elsewhere throughout the broader region. Turning to Jerusalem, where IDF Chief of General Staff Lt. Gen. Aviv Kochavi announced that the IDF is speeding up plans to deal with Iran and with the military nuclear threat. Speaking at a closed session of the Israeli Parliament's Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, the top Israeli general underlined the IDF's transformation as part of the strategic plan Tznufa, Hebrew for momentum, 
in which it is currently undergoing a period of change and adaptation that effectively integrates all units to a modern and somewhat futuristic battlefield. General Kojavi further asserted, according to declassified excerpts that were published from the closed parliamentary session, that while Israel faces many security challenges on six different fronts, it is working on defensive strategies, including measures to thwart potential attacks, as well as improving its offensive battle plans. Following those voiced remarks, which are said to indicate a credible military threat to wordy Iran's malign behavior, the United States has seemingly toned down its lately exerted carrot-and-stick approach toward the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, in light of the latter's announced intention to return to the negotiating table in the Austrian capital Vienna on November 29th. Aviv Kufafi said that uh, Israel is accelerating operational preparedness to possible for a possible strike against Iranian uh, uh, nuclear facilities uh, and so on. Uh, are such statements, you know, uh, can can this a statement like this complicate your effort to go back to the Vienna negotiation? How does that impact it? We uh, have been sincere uh, and steadfast uh, in uh, our belief in our statements uh, that uh, we in our uh, uh, confidence uh, that a mutual return to compliance uh, remains the most effective means by which uh, to permanently and verifiably uh, ensure that Iran is never able to uh, acquire a nuclear weapon. Uh, we believe that uh, a diplomatic outcome, a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA, uh, is in America's uh, national interest, but it's also in the interest uh, of our um, partners uh, and, and allies in the region uh, to see to it that Iran is uh, never in a position uh, to acquire uh, a nuclear weapon. Uh, that is why uh, we continue uh, to seek constructive engagement uh, in Vienna, uh, including when the talks resume later this month. While the Biden administration's approach toward the Ayatollah regime's aggressive policies, including its nuclear program in particular, remains unshaken, Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Sayyid Hatib Zadeh asserted during a press briefing that Tehran remains adamant on its demands regarding any chance of reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement, namely the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. ایالات متحده مسیرش برای بازگشت به برجام روشنه یک باید بپذیرد به عنوان مقصر وضعیت فعلی از این مسیری که رفته برمیگردد برای بازگشت به بازگشت از این مسیر غلط هم باید تحریم های ظالمانه ای رو که و تحریم های غیر قانونی رو که بعد از خروج امریکا از ایالات خروج آمریکا از برجام اعمال کرده همه رو یک جا به صورت مؤثر بردارد و مهمتر این که تضمین بدهد که هیچ دولتی در ایالات متحده مجددن جهان رو و حقوق بین الملل رو به سخره نخواهد گرفت و این شرایط رو تکرار نخواهد کرد. The Iranian Foreign Ministry further emphasized that the Islamic Republic does not intend to capitulate to Washington's demands to so-called strengthen and lengthen the deal once all relevant parties return to compliance with the terms set under the 2015 agreement. Turning to the Syrian capital Damascus, where President Bashar al-Assad hosted Emirati Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed al-Nahyan for a first high-level meeting since the Syrian civil war erupted in 2011. According to an official statement, President al-Assad and Foreign Minister bin Zayed al-Nahyan discussed bilateral relations including the exploration of new horizons for cooperation, especially in vital sectors, in order to strengthen investment partnerships in these sectors. It is important to know that the United Arab Emirates is considered to be one of the closest U.S. allies in the region, which spearheaded the so-called Abraham Accords with Israel. Therefore, when asked about the high-level meeting in Damascus, which clearly indicates a rapprochement between the United Arab Emirates and Syria, the United States has unequivocally voiced its concern over the signal it sends. Well, uh, we are concerned uh, by uh, reports of this meeting uh, and the signal it sends. Uh, as we've said before, this administration will not 
express any support uh, for efforts to normalize or to rehabilitate uh, Bashar al-Assad, who is a brutal dictator. Uh, we urge states in the region to uh, carefully consider the atrocities that this regime, uh, that Bashar al-Assad himself, uh, has uh, perpetrated on the Syrian people over the last decade, as well as the regime's ongoing efforts to deny uh, much of the country access to humanitarian uh, aid and security. This is an issue that uh, we often do have uh, opportunity to discuss uh, with our close partners in the region, including uh, with our Emirati partners, uh, and we've made very clear where we stand on this. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the United Arab Emirates in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. Separately, I would like to thank all of you who support TV7 Israel, since all of our broadcast operations are 100% donation-based, Without your generous donations, TV7 will not be able to serve you alongside the millions of others that are watching from around the world. With that being said, we at TV7 give all glory to God for His provision and blessings. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.